My team and I are scientists at Los Alamos National Laboratory, and we work in visualization, which is the science of how to make pictures out of data. And in this context, we were trying to come up with an algorithm that would automatically improve color maps so that the physicists here can use it to better understand their data when they color code the results of their simulations. For us, the significance of this study is not really so much in the how does it change the industrial sector in the future, but it's really the theoretical contribution because we're overturning a paradigm that is 100 years old, and, and not just this, but it's a paradigm that has been established by like those incredibly smart and incredibly famous people, like Riemann, who was the first person who suggests that color space would be Riemannian. Yeah, and then Helmholtz, and of course Schrödinger, who worked on that thing, who, who even is a Nobel Prize winner, right? So being able to prove somebody wrong <laughs> as a Nobel Prize. This is just, um, yeah, I think it's a one once in a lifetime opportunity. And I am I'm thrilled <laughs> that we were the lucky ones to, you know, find this gap. It was my dream always. That was the reason I wanted to become a scientist. I wanted to disprove somebody famous, but I had not expected it would be somebody that famous. So that was luck. <laughs> During the literature research for this project, we came across the Riemannian model of color, which was developed by Riemann, Helmholtz and Schrödinger. In a Riemannian geometry, the distance between two points is always the length of the shortest path that connects them. Um, that must not necessarily be a, um, a straight path, it can be curved, but it can always be measured by just walking along the shortest path and pretty much counting your steps. And what we found out is that the principle of diminishing returns, which is something that has been seen in experiments, um, it shows that very far apart colors by humans are perceived as if they are not really that far apart. To give you an example, I take a red and a blue and ask some, some people, how far do you think those are apart? How many steps would you have to walk in order to get from here to here? And they assign a number, let's say 10, it's, doesn't matter. And then I take a color from the shortest path that connects them somewhere in the middle, like some, some purple, and ask them again, how far are those two apart? And surprisingly, they would usually not say five, but something that is significantly larger, like a seven or something. So that if you start counting your steps as you walk from red to purple, plus the steps from purple to blue, you get something that's much bigger than the original number of steps. And this phenomenon cannot be modeled in a Riemannian geometry, which is additive. And therefore, we found out that you need a more general space to model color perception for humans and a paradigm shift to this paradigm of a Riemannian space, which had been in place for 100 years now. Why would that matter? It's always needed whenever you want to have an automatic way of figuring out how different colors are. So um, applications would be in automatic image processing or in video compression, or if you want to adjust the lighting or the white point in the camera, for example.